Welcome back. In this video, we'll have a brief introduction of the um, selection, mutation, and crossover genetic operators. We mentioned the three of these uh, over the last couple of videos. In this video, we'll have slightly more information. We start with selection. How do we select candidate solutions or chromosomes or parents uh, from a population to use them in crossover uh, or mutation? The pro to use them for crossover. The problem here is how do we select these chromosomes? The basically, what we want, we want to select the best ones so we can use them to create a new offspring, right? Uh, traditionally, parents are chosen to mate so we can choose parents in accordance with their probability. So with probability proportional to their fitness. Not, I'm sorry, not accordance with their probability according to their fitness so with probability proportional to their fitness and this is called proportional selection and traditionally what happens is these children they replace their parents but we mentioned uh, the problem of losing good candidate solutions from previous populations and we mentioned this idea of elitism where we need to make sure that at least one good solution survives uh, and uh, stays in the uh, next population so uh, we can choose them, for example, with probability proportional to their fitness, i.e. how good their fitness is, and we can replace the parents and we'll need to make sure, for example, that the good parents stay for the next uh, uh, population. And there are actually many, many methods for selecting the best chromosomes. For example, we have the roulette wheel selection, the Boltzmann selection, tournament selection, rank selection, steady state selection, there's many of them, and the whole principle is survival of the fittest so we want the best solutions to be selected the best candidate solutions or the best chromosomes the next operator is the mutation the mutation it operates only on one parent actually one parent chromosome and the idea what uh, and produces an offspring with some changes the idea we toggle one or more bits in a binary representation so here we're speaking about representing the candidate solutions as binary strings and the mutation is we can randomly choose, for example, one of these bits and then we toggle it from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. So each bit has the same probability of mutating. So we randomly choose one of these bits, for example, and just changes, flip it from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. That is mutation. And that gives us, as you can see, a another solution, right? The ch solution changes and becomes another solution. If you remember before, we spoke about uh, the search space. So this actually is a change in our position in the search space because we move into uh, another solution, right? The crossover, it actually operates on two parent chromosomes now or two parent uh, candidate solutions and it produces one or two children as of as of spring and uh, we can do it for example at what well, we can do one point crossover so we choose one point and then we just exchange or swap that, that portion of each uh, uh, chromosome or each candidate solution as you can see so what we did here is we just move this part to this chromosome and this part to this chromosome and this is these are the two new chromosomes or we can choose a two point crossover where we choose two points in the chromosome or two indices and then we just exchange the contents or the elements or the values between those two uh, 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 indices as you can see now the new chromosomes are different uh, to, to, uh, when you compare them against the parent ones, right? So these are the three operators briefly. Um, in the next video, I will briefly introduce microbial genetic algorithms very, very briefly, and then we'll use them to solve a simple problem where things will make sense. After that, I will try to explain in more detail these uh, genetic operators, selection, mutation, and crossover, and then we'll try to have a look at, for example, some more representations rather than binary string. We'll maybe have a look at, for example, uh, the case when we use, for example, uh, digits like integer digits or numbers rather than uh, binary numbers, rather than zeros and ones. Right, so I'll stop here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.